you asked for it so here it is swim bait arsenal and i got first let me just start off by saying before i roll this intro i'm not happy about doing this video i'm not happy about doing it and i'm going to tell you why in just a second oh my gosh oh What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Alex. If you are new here, I am Oklahoma's worst angler. And like I said, I'm doing the swim bait arsenal video and I'm gonna tell you guys why I do not like doing this video. I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it because I care about you. I'm doing it because you guys have asked me multiple times and I finally just woke up early this morning and I did it. But the reason I don't wanna do this is because my OCD is having an anxiety attack. This is, I, I have everything placed where I want it to be, but I broke out almost, almost, like I said, almost all of my swim baits to show you guys. And I say almost because there are multiples of the same style, just in different colors. And then some that, you know, I just, I wanted to keep it about the six inch range. And there's a few that are a little less than six inches, but I just want to show them to you guys. But I wanted to keep it around the six inch or bigger range um, because that is, you know, what I truly consider a swim, a swim bait, if you will. Um, kept some of the paddle tails out, kept some of the, you know, just the traditional paddle tail style swim baits. Um, even if they are bigger than six inches, I kept some of them out. But let's get down to it and let's figure out where to start. I'm probably going to start off with, uh, I don't know. Probably just show you guys like the rods and reels that I use and what they're for and what I typically use them for rather. All right, so first rod I'm going to show you guys here. Got to make sure I'm not hitting anything else around here. This is my Halo HFX 711 Extra Heavy. So this guy right here, what is this? Three quarters to two ounce. Now, while this is an extra heavy, fast this has got a very fast tip i mean very fast tip it is this is more like a a good jig hook rod in my mind that's what i like to use this guy for is jig hooks 7-eleven extra heavy um i have used this with some of the lighter swim baits you know around the two the two ounce range uh with treble hooks and the tip is just entirely too fast for those treble hooks it doesn't have uh doesn't have that good parabolic load is really what it is, but it is fantastic for those jig hook style baits. Again, that is the Halo HFX 711 Extra Heavy. Not a super long butt on it, really nice compact, kind of, even though it is 711, you can get some really good kind of accurate casts or fairly accurate casts with it. Three quarter to two ounce. Now, why don't I have a reel on this? Well, that's because I've got uh, I got a couple new reels that I'm still waiting to show you guys on the channel. So there's another rod in here that does not have a reel on it just yet because I'm in the process of, like I said, still doing the unboxing and showing those off. So the next rod that I have is my Okuma Guide Select swim bait rod. Now this is the 711, yes, 711 heavy. 7-Eleven <laughs> heavy, fast. I mean, it says it's a fast. It's more like a moderate fast. This is rated for one to six ounces. Now, paired up on that, I've got my Okuma Citrix 364. Got that nice Gomexis handle on there, 120, 120 millimeter Gomexis handle. The butt on this rod is very robust, if you will. Very robust. You get a really good purchase on that. It, again, it's not super long, but it does allow you to really kind of tuck it into your body nice. Rate of one to six ounces. So this guide select, like I said, it, even though it is, you know, a fast, it is more along the lines of like a fast to a moderate fast. I mean, it's got a good taper, a very good taper in the tip right here. So I like this guy for some jig hooks, but more so the treble baits. Treble hook baits, the bigger guys. Um, 
As you guys will see very soon, I have a lot of treble hook baits. But like I was talking about with the handle on this, not super long, but it really does give you a nice, clean, tight purchase into the body. So you can keep that thing tight for those hook sets. You're gonna have that right up against the body rather than you know a traditional style uh, fishing rod. It's gonna be tucked really nice and tight. Words are kind of hard. But anyways, Okuma Citrix 364 on the Guide Select Swim Bait Rod, rated one to six ounces. And next up, you guys, if you've been on the channel for a while, you know this is Old Faithful. This is, this is tried and true. This is my go-to. Every time I leave the house, the ghost coat is coming out with me. Every time I leave the house to go fishing, whether it's on my boat or somebody else's boat, the ghost code is always coming with me. Now this is the Ghost Code 800 Heavy. This is the eight foot moderate fast heavy power rod. Moderate fast, like I said, I've had this guy for uh, over a year now. It's definitely been over a year. And I mean, other than just being dirty, this is, this is my workhorse swim bait rod. I've been through quite a few different swim bait rods. I've had I-Rod, I've had 13. Um, I've had, you know, the Halos. Um, I even had a Cast King at one point. But this has been the best swim bait rod I've, I've ever, ever owned. So, with that being said, I've got the Komodo, the Okuma Komodo 364 on there. Again, this reel, this is the, yeah, this is the swim bait reel that I've owned the longest as well. I've been through a few different ones uh, before this but this is the one that i've owned the longest and this has become again my workhorse reel and haven't done anything to it i mean i don't want to jinx anything the only thing i've ever done with this reel is literally just re-spool it haven't really cleaned it haven't really oiled it haven't even changed the handle out on that but on there you guys can see i've got uh, i guess we'll show the first swim bait here but this is the castaic jerky j the giant jerky j so the Castaic Giant Jerky J, this is a seven inch paddle tail swim bait. I've got a 12 aught or a 10 aught. I think that might be a 10 aught. 10 aught or a 12 aught flashy swimmer on there and I do have a snap on there. Normally I wouldn't throw these guys with a snap, but the last time I was out, I just wanted you know to be able to swap out pretty quickly. But what I do like about these Jerky J swims, I really like the thinner section of plastic in between the body and the boot tail there. Some guys don't like that or that paddle tail, but the reason that I like that is it really, you can get this thing kicking like crazy at a good slow roll. Got a little bit of extra plastic on there. Um, hopefully I don't stick myself with the hook. But this thing has got a wicked, wicked kick and a nice little body shimmy at a slow roll. You know, very similar to say like a, a mag draft freestyle. But I do like this guy a lot. Uh, haven't hooked up on it just yet. Just recently had some massive follows on it though. Absolutely massive follows. But yeah, I guess we'll show the first one. But again, this is the Ghost Code 800 Heavy Moderate Fast with the Okuma Komodo 364 on there. Now this guy has got a very long long tail section to it. So this is definitely one of your longer handle swim bait rods. And this is one that I can keep tucked in close or I can keep it a little further out depending on what kind of bait that I'm throwing with it. This has been my go-to, especially for like my glides, my multi-jointed multi baits, um, even my jig hook baits, you know, the burrito. Um, that, I mean, I feel like that's one of my more recent videos is going out there and throwing the burrito and you know, hitting three fives back to back on this rod. And even though it is a moderate fast, it had no issue whatsoever slamming that jig hook in there just fine. So I don't know if I showed you guys the actual tip on this rod. So I'm gonna try and pull this down here and uh, show you guys. This has got a good, a very good, like I said, a moderate fast. So even a fast, I'm trying to figure out how to do this. This thing is so long, but you see, it's got a little more of a fast tip than, say, that Okuma does, but the load on this thing is absolutely perfect. The only thing that I, the only issue that I've had with this is 
not with the rod whatsoever. This is just from, you know, my own um, incompetence. Yes, my own incompetence is throwing too light of a bait on this rod. Even though it is one to six ounces, it's not so much the rod as it is the rod and the line overpowering my smaller baits. So this can definitely be a little too much for, depending on the line, depending on the reel you have on there too, but it was a little too much for the smaller baits. I'm talking like the right at one ounce or a little like one and a quarter ounce. That's where I've only had an issue. It's not really an issue. It's just my own incompetence issue with this rod. So with that being said, like with that rod being, you know, a little too much for some of those, you know, smaller baits as far as treble hook baits, Enter the new one, which you guys just saw in my latest video, and that is new gear, new swim baits, and that is the 7.6 medium heavy ghost code. This is 7.6 medium heavy ghost code, rated one to four ounces. 7.6 being just a little more compact, a lot more of an accurate throwing rod. The handle not near as long. I can still get a good purchase on this right here, keep it in tight. But this is the rod that, like I was talking about, I just, I didn't know that I needed, but I needed. And like I just kind of said with, you know, my own incompetence with the original Ghost Code rod, this is the rod that's going to be able to handle the glide baits like the Greenleaf clone right here, like this guy. Smaller glide bait, it's going to have enough tip. I mean, it is a fast action rod. I've already taken this out, I've already thrown it, I've done a trash pass on a bait that I'm gonna show you guys here pretty soon. Throwing it on this rod and it was absolutely perfect for those. So one to four ounce, seven, six, very, man, just, I mean, being able to, you know, not have that length of the eight foot and being able to really just kind of, just get those baits in there where you want them, it's, it's pretty nice. I mean, it's exactly what, like I said, like what I needed. But very fast tip, but you can see how that load comes back almost to, you know, the first third of that rod right there. So very nice loading rod. One thing that I love about the Ghost Codes too is, I don't know if you guys can see this here, but this has got, you know, not, not micro eyes, not micro guides, anything like that. So it's going to handle that, you know, bigger line. Now, I've never messed around with, say, leader knots just yet but these are rods that i feel that i can 100 percent throw with a leader knot on there i'm sorry i'm doing all kinds of moving and stuff around also i know my garage is a freaking disaster let's not let's not focus on that let's get into the swim baits i've showed you guys what i you know what i throw them on the swim bait setups and again the reels you're gonna have to wait because the reels are coming I mean, they're already here, but I took them off just because I didn't want to spoil the surprise. But let's get into the swim baits and show you guys the, about 90% of my swim baits. 80%, 85, 85, 90, 80 to 90%. All right, so just since I have them sitting right here next to me and I'm paranoid of moving my leg too far one way and getting a treble hook in my bait, let's show off my big top waters, the big spook style, pencil style walking baits. And we're gonna kick it off with the Mega Dog. The Mega Bass Mega Dog in bass. This guy right here, if you can tell, has been thrown a bit. He is rashed up. This is one that I've thrown many a time and I've only caught one fish on. Only caught one fish on it, but it was totally worth it because this bait it got me my largest fish for a while out of a very pressured lake, one that I have cut my teeth on, one that I have spent a lot of time on, and that is Big Soma. And she may not have been the heaviest, but she was extremely long. She was 24 and a quarter inch. So the Mega Bass Mega Dog 220, this is like eight inches or over, yeah, close to eight inches, five ounces four or five ounces, somewhere along those lines. I'm not gonna remember a lot of stats of a lot of these swim baits. I'm gonna do my best. But swiveling hook hangers, extremely large treble hooks. 
And that has been by far, I mean, just one of my absolute favorite baits. I am a sucker for a bass print or a bass pattern. So Mega Bass Mega Dog. Sticking with the Mega Dog, we've got the Mega Dog X. Now the Mega Dog X, this is one that I just recently got in uh, that Mega Bass giveaway. I won that contest and got this in. I do not believe these are even available in the States just yet. I haven't thrown it yet. Obviously, you can tell it's very nice, very clean, not rashed up just yet. Swiveling hook hangers. It is the downside or downsized version of the Mega Dog. This is well, probably about a little over six inches about two ounces it's much lighter weight it's much easier to what is it yeah two and a half ounces right there it says right there on the right there on the top i don't know if you can see that but two and a half ounces so much smaller a little quieter much more manageable to throw that's the thing about that mega dog x that thing will wear you out getting that thing chopping all day i mean it is it's tough so like i said i have not thrown this guy yet i do not know uh, that is one thing I forgot to mention about the Mega Dog X is even though that is a topwater and it's a spook style bait, I feel like it is a topwater glide bait. You can get it tight walking, but it really excels on a slow, wide walk, and you can get it going extremely wide. What you got to do is when you make that chop, you got to kind of lean your rod into it to give that line just a little bit of slack to really let it glide out and glide back. That is phenomenal topwater bait next up we got the dirty donkey the suicide uh not suicide what how oh, i cannot remember the i remember the name i remember the the maker of this and now i can't and i'm sorry but this is the dd the dirty donkey in carp this is a silent bait except for the trebles completely silent Okay, completely silent. It's got a really nice cup right there under the nose to where it's going to get a good spit on the walk right there. Let's get that in focus here. Hopefully we can get that in focus. But completely silent, spook, walking bait. This has got a nice tight walk. Creates a good spit to it as well. Like I already said, I'm kind of repeating myself at this point. It is a resin bait. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've thrown a little bit, but I was so obsessed with throwing that Mega Dog last year that I didn't put a lot of time with this guy right here. And then we got the Lunker Punker G2. Okay, this is the Lunker Punker G2. This is generation two. The original Lunker Punkers are wood. This is plastic. This has got a good rattle to it. And then this is in bass. Now this is actually from our good buddy, Chris Postier. That's who I have this from right here. But the G2 Lunker Punker, 6-inch, not the 8-inch guy. Steve has got the originals. Chris has the originals, those big Lunker Punkers. You ever want to see a Lunker Punker catch here in Oklahoma? Go over to the OK Fisherman's page and find him catching them on a Lunker Punker. Blowing that thing out of the water. It's crazy what these bass will do for these big topwater baits the right time of year, and the right body of water. All right, cool. Big top water's out of the way. Let's get into soft baits. We're gonna start off with, uh, uh, I wanna say like all jig hooks, but I'm just gonna go right into all the soft baits that I have, and again, tell you if I've got multiple of them in different colors, and tell you, you know, a little bit about them. So first up, we've got the Castaic boot tail. This is the 10 inch boot tail in bass. Like I said, I'm a huge bass fan. So the 10 inch Castaic boot tail, the actual weight on this thing, I do not know. I want to say it's around seven ounces. It is a massive, massive bait. It is extremely soft, ton of movement to that tail right there. The one thing that I would say about it, that jig hook is a little small. It does make me kind of concerned for the size of that jig hook. Makes me a little concerned. And the reason I say that is because this is such a big bait. You're going to have to have a bass just take that head on to get that jig hook in there. Now, the body does compress. I mean, it's got a little bit of room in there for that hook. But this is going to take a hellacious hook set 
and the right kind of rod to get this thing hooked up and into that fish's mouth. But I've got ways to go about that. And I'm gonna show you guys that in just a little bit here on what we do for baits like this. Next up, we got the eight inch boot tail from Castaic. Now I've got a couple of these. This is just in bluegill pattern. So I do have a couple of these. I've got a blue shad and I've got a bass as well. But this is in the bluegill pattern. This is the eight inch Castaic boot tail. Much more manageable. Jig hook, I feel like is the perfect size for that bait right there. Very soft bait. Lots of kick in that tail. You can see, I mean, you can slow roll that, crawl that on the bottom. It's going to have a very similar kick to, say, like a HUD or anything like that. But that is the bluegill pattern of the Castaic 8-inch boot tail. Sticking with Castaic, I've got the Bass Harasser. Okay, so the Bass Harasser, another boot tail style bait. However, you can see it's got a big jig hook on there. Lots of room, jig hook has moved further back, that I do like. And you can see it's got an attachment right back here, and that is for this belly hook. So the belly hook you can actually remove, and you can move to the back. So it's got little pins right here that you take out, and you can remove this hook on the bottom, that free swinging hook right there, and you can move that to the back of the bait right there to use as a stinger. Now, I've got a couple other colors in this one as well. This is the, uh, I want to say this is the dark trout or the California trout. And you can see, I mean, lots of action to that tail in the Bass Harasser. The Bass Harasser is a newer bait from Castaic. And this one I have not thrown yet because I've been throwing the boot tails. But I am pretty pumped to be throwing this guy. And I will be moving this treble hook to the back as a stinger. Now moving into some of the weedless guys. We've got the 13 Fishing Banff Shad, big, a, <laughs> the big, big old shad, the Banff Shad. This is in blue shad, and I do like this. I mean, this thing has got a lot of kick to it. It's very similar as far as the action of a uh, Tormentor tail and say like a Battle Shad, which I had a Battle Shad, and I actually um, gave that to Chris himself so but this is rigged up on a 12 watt beast flashy swimmer and that 12 watt beast flashy is more than enough hook for this bait you can see that bait collapses very well to give way to that big old hook so these guys are actually made for that it's got that channel right there built in for the weight system of that and like i said Flashy swimmer, you can roll flashy with the blade on there or not, but this has got a great action to it. It does, what you really want to do with this first off is throw this, get it wet, get some water into that hollow body, body cavity, and then it will sink quite a bit faster. Speaking of 12 watt beast hooks, <laughs> this is actually from Steve, the OK Fisherman. This is one of his hand pours. And this guy right here, I have not thrown it yet. I haven't rigged it up yet. I've been waiting to, but I literally just witnessed him throw this guy a little over, a little over nine inches, eight inches. So we got it right next to the eight inch Castaic boot tail right there, right about eight inches. And this is molded for a 12 watt, 12 watt beast hook. And this is one that he actually took a bunch. And the reason I wanted this one, I think, I think he made this one for me, whether he says it or not, I think he made this one for me because this has got a lot of the chameleon Strike King plastic melted down. So that's where you're getting that kind of iridescent look to it, that iridescent shine. And he'll say that it's ugly, it's, you know, bubbly. I don't care. This thing looks awesome. 12 inch, a little over eight, 12 watt. 8 inch weedless swim bait and like I said I literally just saw him hook up on that thing caught a six pounder on his own I love it I'm pumped to throw it now we'll jump into the dream smashers that I have so this is the dream smasher flying V so the flying V flying Vic is a seven and a half inch a little over seven and a half inch swim bait very blocky nose big wedge tail on there Tons of kick, 
Tons of shimmy side to side on this bait. The profile on it is enormous. And I mean, I absolutely love this bait. It is rigged for a 10 aught or a 12 aught. I want to say this is a, I want to say this is a 12 aught. This is a 12 aught beast. Not a flashy swimmer, just 12 aught beast hook. Weighted and love that bait. I've thrown it plenty of times. I've had one bite on it and I have yet to hook up. And then sticking with the Dream Smasher, we've got a couple of the weedless shads right here. The Shimmer and Green Pumpkin. So these guys are a little, uh, a little more stiff. Nice, really quick action to them. Big blocky head again. This guy's been rigged up. These take a 6 aught, and they look phenomenal in the water. I mean, very, very good in the water. Not Like I said, not as much tail kick as the Flying V or some of the other paddle tails. But this is a great weedless grass swim bait. Dream Smasher, Weedless Shad. I think that's the name of them. I don't remember for sure. And I'm sorry, Dream Smasher. Um, sorry, Rich Hellabass for not remembering. But what is nice about these guys, I don't know if you can see that there. But these have got a channel that is already rigged for the hook. So it is made to take that hook. It's already pre-rigged. There you go. And then you can kind of see the channel in that clear one right there. Just go right in there. And then next up, we've got the beat up mojo filled hammer shad. Hammer tail shad. This guy right here, Matt Lewis hammer tail shad. Now you can see this guy's rigged up uh, pretty differently. So these have got that humongous wedge tail on there. It's not even a wedge, it's more just a. It's like a cylinder tail, but we rigged this guy up. It's got one eye, it's missing another one. This has got a lot of mojo to it, but we rigged a stinger hook on this because we found that a lot of the fish last year around fall were biting the tail. So took out that original jig hook right there, or the treble hook that was up there, and re-rigged it to just the tail with some cable. Put it right on the line tie right there and rigged it right back there. So. That is how I want to rig up that Castaic boot tail that I was talking about, that 10 inch. I want to rig a, uh, a tail stinger on that guy or even middle of the back. Um, on the back side of that, that rear dorsal right there, maybe right there is where I'd like to rig it, but we'll find out. We're probably gonna have to uh, rig it onto that jig hook and then do it that way. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this is extremely difficult to do, especially when the kids are up, because I'm having to <laughs> go in there and chase them around and come back out here and remember where I left off. But anyways, now we've got the ABT, oh, that was the Dirty Donkey. It was the ABT Dirty Donkey, that's what it was. ABT Wagtail in Carp. And you can see this guy does come with a pre-rig Butch Brown type rig treble hook right there and then we did rig a rear stinger on the carp version of this guy so we did that it's got a nice wedge tail as well this is definitely a bottom crawling type of swim bait this does not do well at a fast retrieve it does much better at a very slow type crawl on the bottom thrown it never had any luck on it but i'm a firm believer that i am going to get a bite on this i'm going to get a big bite on this and because, I mean, we've got some lakes that have got carp in there, and I know those bass feed on carp. I think OHIV is a, uh, a prime example that bass feed on carp. I think they're a good fatty meal for those bass. And I'm trying to re-rig this without sticking myself in the thumb there, but I'll put that down. ABT Wagtail and carp. And then sticking with carp, got the Savage Gear 4D Pulse Tail. Savage Gear 4D Pulse Tail. This one does come, if you guys don't know, it does come pre-rigged with a stinger on the back. So it is a cable already in the harness. Big jig hook with a stinger on the, in the back there. And the tail on these is a really good, really good thumping tail. Kind of that, uh, I don't know the shape of that. I don't know what I would call that. It's almost like a hammer tail. But these baits do well at a semi-fast retrieve, not like a burn, but they can be swam very well. They stay true. 
Only downside that I've had to this guy is that rear stinger coming out. That has happened multiple times, so just be careful of that on your cast. Bomb it too hard, too far, sometimes that rear stinger can come out and just kind of be hanging on the side there. Again, never had a bite on this guy, but kind of like the uh, ABT, I know that we've got car beaters here. So Savage Gear 4D Pulse Tail. And another sentimental bait. This is a, an old HUD. I want to say it's ROF 10 or ROF 12. It's not an ROF 5. It does sink fast. But this guy is already Butch Brown rigged. And we did put a rear stinger on that right in the tail there. But I actually got this IU HUD. This is an IU. I got this one from Steve a long time ago, back when I first started throwing swimming baits, when I thought a six inch mag draft was big. And I will always, always hang on to this. I mean, hopefully it never breaks off, but this is a bait that I will always hang on to because again, it was just, it was a gift from Steve and means a lot to me. I say it's IU, but the more I look at it in this light, I think it used to be a trout. This used to be a trout, not IU at all. So sentimental bait hud 68 and then the very first hud that i ever bought this is the 68 weedless see the jig hook is buried in there weedless 68 hud and i want to say this is an rof five or less it is a very slow sink look at the tail on this thing i mean that is what makes a hud a hud but my very first HUD that I got had high hopes for it <laughs> and fished it a lot and just didn't really have the gear to fish it as much as I wanted to. And I have not fished it enough. But now that I say that, I'm probably going to go throw this guy today. I think I might go throw this guy today. I think it might be the ticket. Next up, we're going to get into the Defiance that I've got. Now I've got a couple of Defiance. I've got a bait fish, Defiant 210. This is already rigged up. The Baitfish Defiant 210. Love the tail on these guys. I love this bait. It tracks extremely well at a fast retrieve or a slow retrieve. This is a moderate sink. The moderate sink is a pretty fast sink. I mean, I, I'm very happy with it. I'd like to get a fast sink to try it out. I have done the slow sink, and I'm not happy with the slow sink. For my style of fishing, I don't know if I just can't slow down enough or whatever it may be, but I'm much happier with a moderate sink. And then the next one that I've got is a Defiant 247 in bass. And that 247 is big. And again, bass, I'm a huge fan of the bass. I've thrown this guy. I had the slow sink in him. I got the medium sink or the moderate sink in him now. Much happier with this guy. And the hooks I've got in the package still. For when I do take it out, I'll throw those hooks in there. I have not thrown the moderate sink just yet. I've only thrown the slow sink in this one. But the 247, that is a big bait, around six ounces. And that's right at the cusp of the weight limit of my rods that I have, even though, even though I've thrown heavier on these. I've actually, the first time I threw the 247 slow sink was on that Halo HFX. And it handled it just fine. That rod is rated up to two ounces, but... That's just a testament to how stiff and how stout that rod really is. Next up, we got the Working Class Zero Citizen 7 and Citizen 6. So I got the Citizen 7 in silver. Big old twisty tormentor tail on this. Now, contrary to popular belief, I am not a huge fan of these right now in the wintertime. And I'll tell you why. Because... This takes a 10-aught beast hook, and this is a half-ounce weighted beast hook. I feel like this, this thing takes forever to get down. It takes a long time to get down to the depth that I wanted. Again, I'm talking wintertime fishing. I'm talking slower fishing. This guy, I really think, is going to excel now in the spring when they're moving up in the shallows and the grass. I really think it will. But wintertime, I threw it. I did not like it as much. I didn't feel like I could really even burn this quite as well. I felt like it rolled. So I don't know if I need to add a snap on there. I know it's rigged straight. I mean, it's about as straight as it can get. But 
One thing about it, I just did not like it for the winter time. I did not like it uh, with how slow it took to get down. Me personally, that's all I'm saying. But the silver and then the goblin. I forever wanted the goblin and I finally got the goblin when the hookup tackle had a drop and I feel like the goblin is going to be an absolute sleeper in those shallows. So I'll be rigging these guys up very soon and be throwing them around in that thick grass because these are very similar, quite a bit bigger, but very similar to some of my favorite soft weedless swim baits. And that leads me into my next one here, which is the Beast Coast Creep and the Miyagi. So the Creep, you can see six and a half or six inches long, a very slender, very slender profile. This is the IU. Now I've got about five different colors in the Creep and I've got probably seven or eight different colors in the Miyagi. The Miyagi is like four and a quarter inch. It's very small, perfect perfect bite sized meal for those bass up in the grass. And that's why I like the Citizen because it reminds me a lot of that, a little bit bigger. Next up we've got, well, a very wide assortment of the 316 Rising Sun. Now this is the eight inch, nine inch Rising Sun. I wanna say it's nine. No, it's eight, eight inch. Holding it up to uh, Steve's, Steve's hand pour there. The Rising Sun, this is a line through, line through swim bait, and this is a bottom hook. So it is a very slow sink. You can bring this right across the surface at a nice slow, you can wake it, you can creep it slow. You can see that tail extremely, extremely soft. Gonna have a ton of kick with this one right here. I've thrown it, had no luck with it just yet. The one that I have had luck with though is the top hook version. So the top hook version is a much faster sink. This is one that I've crept along the bottom. I have caught fish on this guy and I'm a huge fan of this line through system. So this is rigged just like the other ones but then it's got this little hole right there that you bring your line through the bottom and then up through that eye which allows it to come up out of the top. Rig it in the back there, sometimes a little bit further back but the top hook version has done very well for me. Now I say I've got a wide assortment because I've got all kinds of rising suns. I've got the weedless versions, I've got the line through version, I've got different colors of the line through version, I've got smaller ones, I've got not bigger ones, but I have quite a few of the rising sun in my arsenal. Now next up I got a couple of baits that are new to me and they're actually from Fish Lab and they're called the Bio Minnow. So this is the bio minnow right here. This is on a 12 aught, which now that I realize this is a 12 aught, I think a lot of the hooks I've been saying are 12 aught are actually 10 aught. But this is the bio minnow, six inch. I've got the pearl and I've got bait fish right here. Or this is shad. Sorry, this is their shad, their shad color. Now I have not had any bites on these guys just yet. Admittedly, I'm just now throwing them but they are great at a fast retreat. They're great at a creep. I have had a lot of luck on the smaller bio minnow, which is about four inches, much smaller. And I've been catching a lot of fish on those on an underspin, just a weedless underspin. Again, this is a 12 aught. I think it's actually recommended for 10 aught. Now what's nice about these guys in particular is they have another channel as well that is meant for that hook to come completely up and out of there with no issue. So you can see it's got plenty of room for that hook to get in there. The bait is soft, it's very durable as well. If I had that little four inch one handy, I'd show you just how often it's been munched on, but I've got quite a few colors of these from bait fish to shad, the bass to the white. And then it just wouldn't be, wouldn't be without mentioning the little creeper trash fish. Little creeper trash fish, this is another one of the very first swim baits that I bought. I've had this guy rigged up for quite a while. Never had any luck on it. Probably haven't thrown enough. Uh, when I first got it, I didn't really understand how to utilize this as a slow bottom crawling bait. So that's, uh, that's my fault. 
for you know not utilizing this bait as much as I should but it has stay, stayed rigged up it has stayed ready um, I need to throw it more but there's just other ones that I like a little bit more so it stays ready does it come out that often no but I've been keeping it in the box lately just in case six inch mag draft these are the only mag drafts that I have I've been wanting to get the eight and 10 inch mag drafts. I just have not done it yet. And I've got about five different mag drafts in the six inch just from, like I said, I mean, when I first got into swim baits, I felt like the six inch was big. I felt like it was big. And I mean, in all actuality, it's not great beginner swim bait, but I've got like five different colors of these guys. And I admittedly do not throw them enough anymore. Ones that I do throw enough though, is the burrito the baka buka collab burrito this is the thread fin this is the one that i have been getting absolutely smashed on i've hooked seven fish and landed six on them and the only wear and tear i have on this guy is a missing eye getting up really close on this guy you can see a little bit of teeth marks on the back there but this has been my go-to that thread fin shad and in this light it's really kind of hard to tell the color of it you get it out in the sunlight you get it in the water that green really comes alive but this has been an absolute killer for me so i of course as you guys know got another one now this guy has got a single knock to it a lot of sparkle of this guy i've only thrown him a couple times haven't thrown him enough the one i have been throwing a lot though is the five inch. Now, like I said, I was gonna keep it, you know, around a six inch limit, but some of these baits I didn't want to show to you because the five inch burrito right here and the color, the color representation on camera is very tough. It's tough to really see. Like I said, I mean, at times this looks very shad, <laughs> very bluegillish, but it's on the ground. So that covers all the soft baits. Let's get into the hard baits. We've got the Depths Bull Shooter 160. And I don't know if that's a ghost gill. I cannot remember the color of this guy. But this is a crank down floating version. The Bull Shooter 160. This guy will be coming into play very soon with it being pre-spawn. Throw this around a lot of beds and get that guy down there. Swimming around those beds, swimming around those bass. I have thrown it plenty of times, never hooked up on it. Then we got the DRT Clash 9. This is in 256. Clash 9, I've thrown it plenty of times. I have only hooked up on it one time, and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> I love the bait. Very versatile. Very unique. The 256 is one of my absolute favorite colors. This was like a like a holy grail kind of unicorn color, which really the bass is my unicorn color. That is the one that I truly want, but I love the 256 on this. Even though I've thrown it plenty of times, I mean, you can't even really tell. It's barely rashed up at all, and it is a great bait. Nine inch, four ounce bait. This is the low float version. Now, as I said, I was gonna keep it around a six inch version or six inch size, but I gotta give a shout out to my buddy Debo, because Debo sent me a couple of his custom painted um, TK Tiny Clash and Super Tiny Clash knockoffs that he has on his website that he has painted himself. And I have thrown them. And this is one that, you know, if you're wanting to get into swim baits, the little teeny tiny clash, this is one that you can definitely get into and throw on your conventional gear. Very, very versatile bait. And then we've got his other custom painted tiny class this is going to be closer to this is going to be closer to your you know real size of tiny clash it is very very similar and you look at the price difference and you look at the availability the swim and the action on this is almost as good as the tiny clash but and i say almost as good it's good enough it's plenty good enough especially like i said for the price and the availability you can find these guys you know the knockoff versions a lot easier than you can the original from the factory or you know from the maker whatever it may be but these Debo shout out to you buddy these are awesome 
I think they're balanced extremely well. And like I said, they have almost as good of an action. You can still remove the tail. You can still remove the lip. And then as you can see there, Debo, which way is it? <laughs> Debo, signed, painted, straight from the man. Good baits, dude. Next one that I've got here is the Fish Lab Biogill, and this is in crappie. Now this is the slow sink glide version. I've got a multi-joint and I've got a wake version and I've got them in bluegill as well as the crappie one right here. This is a slow sink. Have not thrown these just yet. Only kind of test swam them in the bathtub. The swim looks very tight, looks very good. It says slow sink and um, it's, it's a pretty quick sink, which is kind of along the lines of what I like for right now when those fish are a little bit deeper. So I will be throwing this guy most likely today or tomorrow to really kind of see the rate of fall on this and uh, let you guys know, well, if you want to know, if you want to trash or pass on this guy, let me know and I'll be more than happy to give you guys my initial thoughts and impressions on the Fish Lab Biogill Slow Sink. Then we got the Bait Sanity Explorer Glide. Bait Sanity Explorer Glide and Bluegill. Lots of different tail options on this. I've got the Hatch Match Paddle Tail. I've got the one that's got a little bit of chartreuse on the tail, and they now have an Atom tail as well. This is, a, this is the slow sink version, or the sinking version. It does have a little bit of a pad right there, which kind of helps dampen the sound of that clack. It's a very tight, fast swim from what I've used so far. This is going to be really good. It's a really good, like, kind of burning bait, kind of burning glide bait, if you will. Um, have not got it to glide wide just yet, but I have not put on different tails either. So has yet to be seen. I am doing a trash or pass on this. I need to get out there with the other tails to really find out though. And the other bait sanity that I have is the antidote. This is the bait sandy antidote in shad. This is a great beginner glide bait right here. Very cost effective, very cost friendly and it has got a great swim to it. One thing about it though, you have to piece these together. When they come in the mail, you have to put the split rings and the hook on yourself. Steve calls it the bait from Ikea, but it is a really good bait. The only downside that I have to it is these, this texture of the scales right here. Sometimes those hooks will get caught in the texture of that scale. So you do have to be aware of that and be careful of that. Then we got a Mega Bass Ice Slide 185 in IU, and this actually came from Oki. Oki did give this to me, the 185. Do like the ice slide. This is another lighter, lighter glide that you don't want to, you want to make sure that you have the right line and the right rod for so you're not overpowering this glide. And then from Greenleaf Customs, we've got the clone. So Greenleaf has got a couple other ones. He's got the Moby, which is giant, absolutely giant. The Zigzag, which is a little bit bigger than this guy. And then we've got the clone. And the clone is this bait, I've thrown it and it's incredible. I mean, it's got a ton of action to it. Really well made, big fan, soft tail. And I've got it in this blue shad right here and this kind of gizzard shad, gizzard shad right there. Now I've thrown these guys plenty. Like I said, they are, they really excel at a fast retrieve, really good at a slow retrieve as well. But this is one that it does get down very quickly for the size and for the weight. I don't know the weight. Um, maybe two, two and a quarter ounce, not very heavy, but this is one that you could throw on, you know, a conventional rod, a heavy power rod, anything like that. But you want to make sure you have enough tip on there because of those treble hooks. You don't want to have too stout of a rod. You want to have enough load for those treble hooks to really dig in there. And now a couple of my favorite glides. The 316 Workhorse and Lake Fork Special. Caught a big, big eight pounder on this guy right here. You can see it's been thrown plenty of times. It's got quite, quite a bit of rash to it. And this is without a doubt my favorite open water glide, open water. It does have a very quick sink. The glide on it's amazing. You get follows almost every time you throw this thing and you will get commits on it as well. Bigger hooks, you wanna make sure that you've got a good stout rod to throw this thing because of the weight and the hooks. 
but enough load in that rod for those hooks too. And then my favorite glide, the one that I had the most success with all of last year is the GFB. The GFB, this guy is completely unpainted, no eyes on it. You can see, I mean, it is bone stock. Bone stock and Michael Stratton, the guy, from, the guy that builds the GFBs, he's asked me if I'm gonna get it painted. I've had buddies ask me if I'm gonna get it painted or even put eyes on it, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to because I've had so much success on it with it just like this that I'm gonna keep it like that. I would like to get another one and I would like to get it painted, um, but right now I am more than happy with this guy. My favorite glide. I mean, it's the probably the best glide that I have for erratic action that you can control. Very quick, works great along the grass lines. This just gets smashed. And then my biggest glide, I told y'all, I like bass. My biggest glide, this is the Wild Beats Lure in bass. I, Wild Beats, I don't remember. I think that's just the name of it. But this is the floating version. One thing I have not done with it just yet is I have not put any suspend strips. I want to put suspend strips on here to try and get it down a little bit deeper. The float on this, this is the widest gliding glide that I have. I mean, this will shoot out four to five foot on every glide. Extremely wide, slow. This guy, I absolutely love it. Have, I mean, I've thrown it plenty. I've had followers on it. I've not had a commitment just yet, but absolutely love the Wild Beat float. See, it's very slender, no tail to it, which throws a lot of people off when they see it, but there is no tail, and this thing has got insane, like I said, insane glide. And then last of the single joints, we have got the Flag 255. Flag 255, this is a single joint and soft bait, glide bait. It has got a probably the most realistic swim to it. It is a harnessed treble bait or treble hook on there. So very similar to say a mag draft. It does just hook right into the body like that right there. And then it's got a weight chamber as well. They send weights and you can put weights in there to kind of help get it down. You actually put them right there in the tail. Um, otherwise it does float. This is a very big learning curve swim bait though. Very big learning curve. Uh, what I found best with this guy is when you bomb it out there far is to start the retrieve fast and get it swimming. And the, like I said, the swim on this is extremely realistic. Took another brief intermission, but now we're done with the single jointed swim baits most of them at least, as far as like glide baits and stuff like that goes. Let's get into the multi-jointed ones. I cannot believe how long this has gone on for. I mean, I can only imagine, I haven't edited this yet, obviously, but I feel like this is gonna be a super long video. So another one of the exceptions to the six inch rule is the Gee Crack Gilling. So the Gee Crack Gilling, this little swim bait right here is just it's killer. This is the slow sink. They're a little harder to get now. You can find the floating versions, but this is one that I just, I loved this swim bait. I ripped it around a bunch in the grass. I mean, it's got a good fast sink to it. Not like super fast, but I mean, for the weight of it. Um, what was it? 125. So, I mean, it's a small, it's a small little swim bait, but the action on this thing is killer. When you kill it it kicks out like crazy you can get really erratic with this thing but this is one of those you know like i said a little exception to the six inch rule love the geek crack gilling and we got the six cents trace now this is in bluegill spawn the six cents trace multi-jointed swim bait from them this is the slow sink i do not have a floating version i'd like to get a floating version maybe to test out um very sharp hooks on these guys this is the one that I've got a trash pass coming on because you guys voted and you wanted to see this more so than the chick magnet. So I went ahead and did them both for you. This has got, uh, yeah, we got a little bit of a rash up there. And a couple of bites. I don't know if we can pick that up on camera or not. But, yeah, so I mean, you know it gets bit. You guys will just have to wait and see the trash pass. Admittedly, I'm going to try and fly through the rest of these because, again, this video has gone on entirely too long, I feel like. But then we got the BD Shad. 
So this is the BD Shad. This is the original BD Shad. This is in bass. And I've got probably four other ones of this guy right here. This is one of my favorite, all-time favorite, multi-jointed swim baits. This, I feel like, has some of the best swimming erratic kick-out action. When you kill it, when it dies, it doesn't just sink. It kicks out. And I love the magnet system to these. So you got a magnet that's going to be holding that holding that treble hook right there. It looks it looks great. This is in bass again. I mean, you guys know I'm a big bass fan. I love the bass patterns. I hope the color is picking that up right and the light's not too bright. But like I said, I got a few of these guys. These are the original ones. I have not checked out the new ones yet. So, but I mean, if it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's what that's how I look at it. But big fan BD Shed. Next we have from Amakatsu or Imakatsu, the triple double. So this is the triple double. And again, in bass, the triple double being triple joints. There's actually three joints. There's a very small joint back by the tail. But this is one of those baits that is a crank down slash wake. Big fan of it. Love the look of it, the realism to it. I think Imakatsu or Amakatsu has got some of the best paint schemes when it comes to their baits. This has got two different line ties. It comes with that snap on there, but you have a crank down line tie and you have a waking line tie on this guy. Very soft tail, replaceable tail as well. So I do like it. I fished it a little bit, but not enough. I've kind of wanted to keep it in good condition because these are another one that are kind of rare and hard to get. Sticking with Amakatsu or Imakatsu, however you want to pronounce it, we've got the Gilroy Baby. Okay, this is the Gilroy baby. This little swim bait right here, again, bluegill. Come on, I mean, we're right around the corner for the straight bluegill bite. But this is a bait that has got a lot of different attachments and, well, it's more of a convertible style bait. You got a big wedge tail on there. You can put a soft tail on there as well. Now, why didn't I include this in the single joints? Because it's a lipped bait and this is one that, you know, can be fished various different ways so this lip right here that crank lip can actually you can unscrew that you can take the lip out you can swap out the tails on it as well so you can put different tails on here and you've got a couple different line ties or you can add a chin weight if you want to just nose down and specifically bed fish another kind of rare swim bait hard to get from amakatsu next we've got the jackal gantrell Jackal Gantrell in carp. If you guys saw my video for the best beginner swim bait, you know I love this bait. Absolutely love this bait. Extremely versatile. It is the only Gantrell that I have. I do not have the Jai Gantrell or the Gantrell Jr. I like the regular old Gantrell. I think the regular old Gantrell is money. Swiveled hook hangers. Swivel line tie as well. But this thing, just a killer bait. Absolutely love this bait. Then I don't think any... I don't think any like swim bait collection or arsenal would be complete without a bull shad. I've got the six inch bull shad, one of the OG bull shads in bone, slow sink. You can see this thing is, I mean, that is straight from the garage of Mike Buka. And I want to paint this thing. I might have to give it back to Steve to get it painted. I don't know yet. I want to, but I'm not sure. Good old, uh, Good old bone is hard to beat though. Good old bone, ba bone, bone. And then to round out the multi-jointed baits of my swim bait arsenal is going to be a bait that I have not thrown yet, that I've been waiting for, waiting to throw, not waiting for, but waiting to throw, waiting to have the right equipment to throw, which I do have now and waiting for the right time of year. And that is the big Ballum 300. This is the madness japan Ballum 300 and of course it is in bass and of course this thing is gigantic the joints on this have all kinds of different hinging points the hooks are sharp i am stuck hooks are big and sharp but you've got three joints technically four they all hinge just a little bit differently that tail is kind of its own joint right there it's a very soft tail, but this thing is 
big. I mean, it's 300 millimeter. I mean, it's as big as the wild beat from nose to tail. And uh, been waiting to throw this guy. Been waiting a long time and the time is near and I will finally go out and get this thing wet and rashed up. It is the floating version as well. So I'm waiting to see how it does. And again, have the right equipment to throw this. I have that now. So that is it for the multi joints. And last but not least, I saved probably my favorite for last. And I say it's my favorite because I am just a top water fanatic. And there's something about a wake bait. I absolutely love wake baits. I don't have as many wake baits as I would like, but again, the wake bait bite is very, it's not quite as wide as the rest of these. So let's get into it. Let's start off with the first wake bait to show you guys. And that is the Black Dog Shellcracker G2. Got this one from Oki himself. Black Dog Shellcracker G2, Phantom Gill. And this is a killer wake bait. Have yet to hook up on this thing. Have yet to hook up on it. I had one, <laughs> one bite last year that it was, uh, we don't know if the fish hit it and I missed it or if the fish just completely missed it late at night, dripping springs in the trees and it was an explosion and I was just crawling this thing, just giving it just enough to where I could kind of hear the kick, but that was it. But I'm stoked. I'm doing a lot more fishing this year because big things are changing here at, uh, at the channel. So Shellcracker G2. Next up, very unique, and you guys have probably seen this on the Trasher Pass. If you haven't, go watch the Trasher Pass for this. This is the Castellanon, or the Manifold Castellanon. A very unique bait. This is in green shad. Multi-jointed all over the place. Different, three different line ties. Still have some line on there. Three different line ties for a wake, a crank, and a swim. I've only used the swim line tie on it, and it was fantastic. It was a very subsurface swim. This is a very different bait, but the action on it is insane. I think too many people sleep on this thing. I think they see the size of it and they see the price of it and they think no way. And I'm fine with that because I would much rather throw it and give, <laughs> give these fish something they haven't seen many of. And uh, I need to get some more colors in this because that is a killer, killer bait. Listen to that knock. Awesome. And we got the Jackal Blast Bone. So the Blast Bone, I've thrown a little bit and I'm doing a trasher pass on this because you guys did want to see that. The Jackal Blast Bone, I've got a couple of these guys, but you can see it's a single joint, waking bait, very soft tail, and it's a replaceable tail as well. Now these are one of the OGs. These have the wood pins. I believe the new ones have metal pins that go in there to hold the tail. But like I said, I got a couple different colors in this guy and we'll be taking it out and trasher passing this guy very soon. I know it just dropped on Tackle Warehouse. I've had it for a long time though. Had it for a very long time. I got it from uh, the hookup, the hookup tackle. So I'm going to take that out there and throw them both around. Then we have the Swimbait Universe Rego Collab D3. This is an eight inch wake bait. And well, <laughs> show you guys, this is a wake or a crank. And um, my crank tie See my crank tie got a little uh, got a little bent down there. Okay, so on this right here, that's that's your wake tie right there. Hopefully we're focusing on that all right. But this bait, love it. It's it's awesome. Got a great swim to it. But uh, that crank down line tie, I was on the back of Oki's boat and I got overzealous and through the crap out of this. I mean, I, I reared back and I sent it. And I sent it straight into the motor <laughs> and it bent that line tie completely down. I have not wanted to mess with it because, I mean, it looks as if, eh, it might not be broken, but I haven't wanted to mess with it just because I, I didn't want to, you know, I don't know, ruin the integrity more so. It still wakes, still does exactly what I want it to do. So we're keeping it that way. I cannot remember the color of this one, but I do know that it's gotten bit and I, I like it. Very unique kind of diamond shaped, di diamond shaped build to it right there. If we can pick that up. There we go. And we've got the Depths Silent Killer. 
the depth silent killer and this is in uh some kind of hasu color i can't remember or waka i don't know i do wish that i had the silent killer in 175 the size bigger is what i would like to see is the size bigger on this one but we've got the 145 and it is perfectly bite sized love this wake bait it has got a very subtle vibration knock to it in there you can get it knocking but when it's moving very slowly it's got that tungsten ball and spring in there that kind of gives it just a vibration to help kind of pick up on the lateral lines of the fish in a very silent silent clack to it and that comes from just the soft body that depths puts on the outside of their molds and on the complete opposite end of silent we've got the noisy docks this is the evergreen noisy docks and this is a absolutely very loud i don't know why it's said absolutely very loud i want to say like absolutely killer but it's a great wake bait i keep saying absolutely and killer all the time lots of noise to the noisy docks and this thing gets smashed it is a phenomenal wake bait absolutely love this thing great for nighttime fishing great for daytime morning fishing especially when they're on that top water bite and you know you got to have a lake that you know they're just going to be hitting top water to be throwing this stuff and luckily we've got a few of them and that's why i go there so much because i love top water and again from evergreen we've got the timber flash so this is the evergreen timber flash in peacock peacock bass big old long boot tail on there single joint wake bait decoy quad hooks on there and i i love this thing i love it probably more so than the noisy docks it gives a good clack to it but it's a nice subtle kind of wake as well then gets eaten and it gets bit and killer uh, i don't know what else to say now let's get into my favorite wake baits and one of them being patches the spro 50 rat and this is patches so steve the okay fisherman painted patches up for me and gave it a custom paint you know, it was that kind of pink and blue radioactive style color. I had the original tail on there, which you can see that tail is in kind of in bad shape. But the paint on this thing is money. He did a phenomenal job with this thing. And I have caught some good fish on this. I caught an absolute giant um, in my top five biggest fish caught on patches. Uh, caught out of a pond, actually. So... Patches is one of my absolute favorite wake baits. And then we've got the Buka Soft Tail. The Buka Soft Tail. I recently just got a replacement tail for this because, um, well, I was throwing this guy on braid and backlashed horribly and just had enough tension on there to where that tail just completely flew off because it is a soft tail. It is a very soft material. Hold it, held in by wood toothpicks. That's all it is. You do the wood because that wood will expand as it gets wet. But this was a custom paint that I got from one of the expos last year from Buka. And this is in carp, obviously. And one of my absolute favorite wake baits. I, I'm so excited to have that tail put back on there because now I can go out there and start throwing this thing again. And last but not least, my favorite... I mean, I would, I would dare say this is my favorite wake bait and i'll tell you why but this is the drt joker okay working class zero drt joker and joy thief now you can see this thing is a gigantic bait it is very wide very robust single joint it is silent i did not want the one with the rattles so the rattle one feels like almost too much but replaceable tail you can change the direction on the tail on this now another cool thing you can do is you can actually remove this lip very carefully without sticking yourself with a hook. I don't want to do it because I've, I've stuck myself with these hooks, taken the lips out before, and I don't want to do it again. But you take that lip out of this thing right here, and you can get it to walk. Like, I mean, it's just, it's a sick walk. But the reason that this is my favorite wake bait is because I have put this thing in some of the thickest hydrilla around here and it bulldozes through it if it's because of that wide lip right there i don't know but it bulldozes through it it comes through just about 
everything I've ever put it through, never been hung up, never been snagged, knock on wood. Uh, I don't have any wood baits. But, you know what I'm saying. The DRT Joker, absolute favorite wake bait. Oh, that's it. I don't know how long this has gone on for, but guys, now I'm going to put everything back. I did this for you. I didn't enjoy it. I did not enjoy taking all this stuff down and taking it out of tackle boxes and all that, but you asked for it. I delivered. So with that being said, I do appreciate every single one of you. Thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed already, hit that subscribe button for me. It helps me out. I'll see you guys next time we're on the water.